Hi, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. Uh, I was going to do a, uh, I was going to shoot a Patreon video today uh, to follow up my introduction to guns video, uh, and today's was going to be a selection of, of handguns. But uh, I was checking my email, uh, which I haven't <clears throat> done in a in a couple of weeks. I get busy really, really busy this time of year, as I've mentioned on on a previous one, I think. And, uh, and I get behind on, on things. Uh, so my apologies, first of all, for any of you who have sent me emails. I've noticed some, but I haven't read. Um, and uh, it's, it's not that I'm ignoring anyone. Uh, and I've gotten some great emails, and I really appreciate them. Um, and I'm going to get back to everybody. Things are slowing down now a little bit. It's a week before Christmas. Uh, my busy time is, is mostly over. So uh, now it's time I get to sit back a little bit and drink coffee and, uh, and start writing again, which I also haven't written <clears throat> in the, uh, the fourth book, Blessing of Freedom, since about the 1st of October, because <clears throat> I, uh, I need to be able to relax. I need to, things to, to kind of flow into me uh, uh, in order to be able to write the kind of things I want to be able to write. And uh, so now I'm going to be able to get back to that, which I'm happy about. But anyway, <clears throat> as I was going through the uh, my emails, uh, I happened uh, I saw one that had been sent probably well, a week ago or more from another author. Uh, it's an author. I won't I won't say who it is um, because I don't know if he would want me to or not. So I won't. Uh, it, it's someone whose book I'm reading right now and uh, liking it very much, and I'm going to do uh, a, a review on it. Uh, if it's okay with him, I'll ask him, or I have asked him. And uh, if, if it's all right, then I, then I will. But in any case, I'm going to recommend it to everyone because I think that everyone should should read it. And when the time comes, I'll, I'll let everybody know what that is. <clears throat> anyway, so I got that uh, this, this email, and he was asking me a, a couple of questions. You know, people in the same business do that. Uh, how do you do such and such, and how do you do this? And uh, and there were there were great questions, and it it uh, it, it reminded me of kind of something that I was going to shoot anyway. I was going to one of these days do a uh, a video uh, called "Write Your Book," and uh, it's for and it doesn't just mean people who are aspiring authors. Uh, it's it, what I really mean by it is whatever you have in you to to spread your message, uh, do it. And and I'm, I won't get farther into that. Uh, on this one, I think I'll still do something like that, but uh, but it it kind of kind of fell into that, and and it reminded me I do have a lot of people who, after having read my books, um, you know, will say, well, gosh, I, I you know I'd like to write a book, but I never could, and I've never you know, and and how do you do it? And and so this gives a, a first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and I'm going to talk about, you know, what, what brought me to this point. Um, and, um, and then I'm going to address those specific questions that this other author asked in his email. Uh, first off, I fell into writing uh, by mistake. Uh, I, I was never, it wasn't something that I always uh, grew up wanting to do. I never thought, oh, someday I'm going to be a, a big writer. Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact, the, the people who are probably the most surprised at the success of my my books besides me, uh, if they're still alive, are my English teachers uh, who probably think that this is totally someone else because they can't imagine how someone who, who sat in the back row and slept through their classes could ever write a book. Um, <clears throat> I probably learned uh, some years ago, I had a guy ask me, I used to, now this is getting into a whole, a whole other thing. Um, I had a guy ask me, because I used to publish a martial arts magazine called Grandmaster. And it wasn't, the, it wasn't one of these slicks, it wasn't Black Belt that, that some, you know, all of us say is written for and probably by 12-year-old uh, yellow belts. But it was for the butt kickers, and, and it did, did very well amongst a, a very... Uh, small niche of uh, of fighters and uh, and professionals, um, 
And, and that's kind of where I, I began writing anything professionally. But I had a guy ask me at uh, one time, is, is, I, is writing an art or a craft? And that was a great question. And, uh, and so I thought about it. And, um, and, and I came to, to realize that, for instance, I, I learned to write police reports. All of my, you know, writing was, was based on police reports. Well, in police reports, like any technical writing, you got the who, what, where, when, and why, and how, and I probably forgot a couple. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a fairly a format, you know. Uh, at approximately such and such a time on such and such a date, you know, blah, blah, blah responded, discovered, found, you know, it's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. What you, you get very regimented, you get fairly disciplined in your writing on that, and especially if you, uh, you know, have to <laughs> uh, defend it in court and, and, and you're up against some pretty sharp lawyers who are going to try to pick you apart. And so you develop uh, a good writing style on that. But, but uh, as, as, as I thought about this guy's question, I, I realized that well, it's uh, writing can, can is is either or both. Uh, it's um, it's it's a craft if it's technical. If there are certain holes that you have to fill, certain boxes you have to check, it's a craft. It can be easily learned. If it's creative, then it's an art. And and I don't know you know whether that's taught or, or what, whether it's inherent whether it can be developed. I, I've always kind of thought it was interesting when I hear people talk about learning to be creative. I, that seemed like kind of a, you know, a, a misnomer to me. And being creative seemed to be something natural, but I don't know. I, I don't claim to be an expert in that. <clears throat> anyway, and, and, and what, now that I've mentioned that, I, I, I'm also going to jump into something else for just a second. I've had people ask me also, um, well, don't I know you from somewhere? But the, the, or I've had friends also say, uh, every time that I see your videos, it's, it's strange how uh, when I hear you say, hi, I'm Steve Smith. Okay, that's, there's a reason for that, and I'm going to share that right now. Steve Smith is the name that I write this other under. It's uh, it's my given name, but I've never gone by Steve my whole my whole life, and now I'm sharing it with with uh, the three or four of you who are watching this. Um, and and that's when I wrote Grandmaster, and I did some other things. Um, my parents named me Stephen after the first Christian martyr, but they always called me Craig, and that's my middle name. And even nowadays, when I when I introduce myself on here. Welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. It still sounds a little bit odd to me, and I'm, I'm afraid that one day I'm going to stumble over it. But all the other years, so if you've known me in other things, I did other things. As I say, I, I um, published uh, Grandmaster uh, Magazine. I, I founded and, and was the head instructor for some time for uh, the Shri Baha. Uh, I call it the martial life system. More than martial arts, it was a way of, of living. And Shliba is, is Irish Gaelic for a way of life. Um, I founded and, and the World Pancreation Federation uh, when we were trying to get pancreation back in the Olympics. Um, I did some other things, I guess. It, not a, you know... Who knows? They'll probably pop up along the way. And to be honest, I don't remember um, all of them. But I, I did other things under, you know, Craig Smith. That's always been my name. And so uh, some people have known me. Most people have known me as that. You all know me on here as Steve Smith. And the reason that I did that is when, when I wrote the first book, The Reversion, which I'm going to get to in just a second, how that all started. Um, I thought, well, I never expected anybody to buy it. Uh, first off, so I thought, well, okay, since probably only my my wife and my mother will tell me that they enjoyed it, and uh, I'll order a few copies to have for the kids around. Um, even though I've gone by Craig Smith all of my life, I'll for one time in my life use the name my parents gave me, and put Stephen C. Smith on there, and that'll be just kind of a testament and a thank you for you know for borning me and naming me and all that. I never expected uh, 
for what has happened with the Stone Mount series to happen. So anyway, so that's a little bit about me that maybe you didn't even want to know. So I, you know, forgive me for taking a few minutes of that to explain it. And now I'll get on to the writing. People have asked me, how do I write or what do I write or how do you do it? And, and I'll take it back to, I started this um, shortly after that, that, um, that TV show, uh, Doomsday Preppers, came out. Um, I had been into preparedness, as I've said before, for most of my life. And, but people, that, that really built an interest. And so I found more and more people um, asking me questions about it. Well, I could see their eyes glazing over as I, I got more into the weeds, you know, on, on things. And they, they just, uh, when I started to explain to them really what they wanted to be thinking about and how they wanted to be preparing, uh, it was just too much for them. And so I thought, you know, I ought to tell a story about this. And, uh, and so I, I didn't, just, uh, that idea just kind of bounced around in my head for a little bit. And uh, I started finally kind of tapping out a, a short story, what I thought was going to be a short story, on my phone. Now, the reason I did that is because I can't type. Uh, men my age didn't take typing in high school or in college. Uh, and even back in my day, in the 70s and 80s, our police reports were still handwritten. And, uh, and so I don't, I don't know how to type, but I did find that I had a notes program on my, uh, on my phone, you know, and, and so I got to thinking, how would I tell a story uh, about an EMP? Because I knew that writing about an EMP would enable me to include all the different aspects of, of preparedness and, and survival of the story that I wanted to tell. So I started hunting and pecking, and, and just like I type, I do it with with one finger, and, I, and I've written all three books and, and the beginning of several others on the phone that I'm recording this on. So this phone is, has done a lot of work, but it's had my finger poked on it so many times. And so I would, I would just, you know, hunt and peck. I'm not one of these guys. I can't, can't, can't do that. And I'd hunt and peck and A, B, C, you know. And it, 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 you can imagine how long it took. Well, I just kept going, and the story kept going, and and uh, um, it just kind of took a life of its own, and I got to enjoy it, and 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 the characters. And I'm going to add more on on this when I answer the questions this other author asked me. Uh, but the characters are the are, are people that I know, uh, are based on people that I know, not the same name certainly, but uh, and so kind of I you know as, as the the story evolved, and I've heard other authors say you know. Uh, the, the story took turns that I didn't expect, and sometimes that, that can be the case. Or sometimes uh, when you really look at you have a, a, an expectation, and a normal story might go along in a very uh, expected direction. But life's not always like that. Sometimes life will give you a turn, and you need to, as you're writing, kind of, you know, say, well, is this where a turn might take? And then you decide whether you want to put in that turn or not. Anyway. So I was hunting and pecking in about a year. And so as, I, as my notes program would get full and it would say, no more, no more notes, okay, I'd say, well, okay, how do I get, well, what do I do? What, what do I do with this? You know, so I discovered that there was, I had a Gmail account and there was a Gmail button on there so I could Gmail it to my, myself at my personal um, uh, email address. Okay, and so I did that. And, I, and, and then I went into that and then I, I tried to figure out, I didn't have Word, I, I don't use any of that stuff. I tried to do it with a couple of free programs, I forget what they were called. Uh, it, it wasn't formatting right, so finally I broke down and I bought Word, because uh, I'd never needed Word before. And um, and then I, I tried to copy and paste it into Word, but it was just all messed up. Uh, the the, the uh, it, it really was a comedy of errors. It took me a year. It took me a year to write. At the end of the year, I says, hmm, I wonder if this is a story or not. I'm sure it's no good, but I wonder if it's a story. And all along, I found that I was writing things to my kids. It was a story to, to tell them things uh, about how to live, about what dad thinks about things. You know, they're, they're, you know how kids are. You try to tell them things, and they may be interested, and they, may, they have other things on their mind. But... You know, later on, when they get older, 
And uh, then after I'm gone, I want them to have something. They can sit down and say, ah, that's what Dad thought about that. You know, they'll, they'll probably get their fill of that anyway. I'm, I'm not shy about sharing my opinions. Uh, but anyway, I realized that I was writing this to my kids. And, and so that's, I started filling in. I started filling in with the, uh, the elements of, of religion, of, of uh, the, the importance of the founding of our country, uh, of, of personal values and principles that were important. And, and, and if we had a chance to start over again after society collapsed, uh, how would I want to start it over again? Um, and what, what safeguards would I want to put in? And, and, and how do people really act in situations and, and, and such as that? So I, I, sure, I was sure it wasn't any good, but I, at least I said, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I found a place that, uh, that would print them off. I do it all through Amazon. And, uh, and I say, I'll order 10 copies and I'll give them to a couple of people and they'll be polite and accept them, you know, and, but I'll, I'll have a couple of copies for the kids. Well, okay, when I finally got it in formatted into, and this, this might, I think my camera's memory is about full here. I see them at 16 minutes. I'm sorry to make this so long. But uh, if it shuts off, I'll come right back and put up a part two. So this will be named something like Stonemont Series something part one if that happens. And if I have to do a second part, it'll be part two. Uh, anyway, so it... I, I said, oh, I wonder if this is long enough to be a book. So I looked up, you know, I, I got, I saw in Word where it told me how many words were in it, and there were 93,000 words. You know, made up, I don't know how many letters, pecked off one at a time with this finger. And uh, and so I, I, I started, I said, well, I Googled, how long is the average novel? You know, I... I forget what it said, but I just happened to put in, how long is Huckleberry Finn? You know, the great American novel. Um, not that I was thinking mine was a great American novel, but, you know. Um, and it said it was 60-some thousand words. And, and I thought, wow, I'm 30,000 words longer than Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, wrote Huckleberry Finn. So I said, okay, it must be long enough to be a book. So I, it took me, I, then I was trying to format it. And into Word, and, and I couldn't figure it out. It, it was all messed up. Uh, the paragraphs wouldn't be right. The lines weren't right. It was all full of weird characters and stuff. Finally, somehow, I don't remember how, but I realized that after I'd emailed it through a couple of different email programs, I had to send it to Notepad, which took all of the formatting out. And then I had to figure out how to format it in CreateSpace, which is where I print through, and lay everything in. Well, it took me a year. Now, if I'd asked a buddy of mine, about it, he could have done it in an afternoon. But I'm a hardhead, and I wasn't going to ask anybody about it, right? I was going to figure it out. Well, it took me a year to figure it out. So I took a year writing it. I took another year figuring out how to um, uh, format it. And then, you know, I had to figure out how to how to upload the files to, to Amazon. And, and, and then I had to design my own. And I always had people say, you know, we can design your covers for you. And I I saw some other people says, you know, I paid five thousand dollars to design my cover. Well, I wasn't gonna do that, so I figured out how to design my own cover, and and I did. It took me a while, but I did, and so I sent the files up and put it up on Amazon, and uh, um, also did the Kindle copy, and um, then I, I ordered a few, you know, I was all happy. I got it in. I couldn't believe there's a book with my name on it, you know, and I'm going to give it to the kids and, and I'll give it to Kelly and my mom and they'll both act like they really like it. And that'll be the end of that. Well, darned if I, I you know, a couple of weeks went by and, and I, I hadn't received any information from Amazon. I was such a dummy. I didn't know how to check it. And I said, well, you know, Anyway, I'm, I'll be able to say that I wrote a book one time, and uh, and then I was able to get into my um, the the dashboard and check the analytics on the book sales, and crying out loud, a bunch of them were selling, and uh, as I kept checking, they kept selling, and they kept selling, they kept selling, they kept selling, and the reversion uh, surpassed any any dreams I would have had. For a book, 
And uh, so I just kind of relaxed and said, wow, isn't that cool? And then I thought, well, I did leave that first book kind of in a way that it could go into a, to a second. And I, I had done that on purpose, but I, I, that was more ego than anything. I didn't really have any hopes that, that these things would sell. Uh, but anyway, I took about a three or four month hiatus to uh, to just kind of sit back and feel proud of myself for having written that first one, and it was selling, and people were writing me and saying how much they liked it, and 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 I I, I, I please don't think that there's a lot of ego or chest thumping in here. I, I uh, God has blessed me beyond well, you know, He blesses all of us beyond what we deserve. That's that's for sure. But God has blessed me. Uh, I ask him, I make no bones about it, I ask him to direct me in my writing, direct me in my thinking, and to bless the, the production and the sales and the reading of, of, of my books. And, and um, he, he certainly has. Um, but anyway, so I, that after a few months, I said, well, I, I guess I should write an, a second one. 